Hey guys, just here with a quick review for The Spy Who Loved Me. Definitely one of my personal favorites and um, is very beloved by the fans in general because this one just kind of has it all. It's got the retro vibes, it's got the comedy and the double entendres, has amazing action, great set pieces, great locations, lots of um, uh, culture basically with the amount of places that they travel to and it has one of the best Bond girls of the series in my opinion not only in appearance but also in character this is one of the very rare times where a Bond girl is taken half seriously uh, like in the past they have names like you know good head good night on the top um, plenty of tool like there's a lot of like ridiculous Bond girls that are just kind of like purposely dumb but this is one of those, I mean, it's not like perfect, but this is like better. This is better than average. This one actually has like a backstory and some relevance in the plot, which is quite rare. Most Bond girls usually just like, um, you know, they just kind of fall into the plot of the film randomly or just like, they're just there because Bond wants to like get laid. But this is actually someone who's like directly involved. This is a like, yeah. So what's this about? Well, it's a little bit about a, uh, an amphibian man with these uh, little warped hands, I don't know how to describe it, but he really likes, he really likes water and he loves sea creatures and his, uh, his evil master plan is to sink the uh, like major cities and basically have the earth like underwater and have all the civilization take place underwater and he wants to like propel, um, you know, he wants to create Atlantis basically. And he's doing that with the help of uh, this device that allows him to track submarines underwater and he hijacks Russian and British um, submarines, or is it American? I don't remember, it doesn't matter though. The, the, the two sides, both of their sides, uh, submarines which have nuclear arms on them and he's going to use that to fire at some of the major cities. Um, and so Bond is obviously tasked with finding and recovering these submarines and um, the KGB agent major also is, and this is like, I think this is the first time a Bond girl has been given a normal name. So this is KGB Major Anya um, Mastrova or something like that. So uh, yeah, she actually has a normal name, which is really surprising. But um, the two of them are forced to work together and little does she know, there's this like a little bit of backstory beforehand where we kind of get to see the Russian version of James Bond with like the Sean Connery chest hair and everything. Um, and Bond kills her lover on a previous mission in a great ski section. I love that sequence at the start of the movie. So, yeah, this movie's really, really good. I actually want to bump it up one point for now, um, but I'll go back to that. So, The Spy Who Loved Me, this is a movie that is retro, nostalgic, really fun, lighthearted, action-packed, has great sets, great locations, and it has the single best uh, henchman of the entire series, bar none. So, uh, for me to say the Bond girl is the single best one would be a loaded statement because there's a lot of debate there, but like, for me to say Jaws is the best henchman, that's not loaded at all. Most henchmen are like throwaway copy clones of Red Grant from, from Russia with Love, but this, this guy, this guy's literally like, I believe he actually has like gigantism or whatever the uh, correct medical term is in real life. So they picked an actor who's actually like a giant, and I don't mean that in an offensive way, I mean it's badass. So they have like a seven or eight foot tall guy, huge muscles, and he's got these iron, uh, like iron jaws in his mouth, and he's a mute character, so he never speaks, and he's very intimidating, and he provides some great action. This is the, like, these punches have way more impact to them than some of the other series, like uh, The Man with the Golden Gun, for example, I kind of feel like they're just dancing around and like throwing pretend punches, but in this one, they're actually like throwing some punches with some real weight to them, and uh, there's like using boards and all kinds of uh, other means to attack each other. So, you know, like Jaws gets like glass smashed over his head and doesn't even phase him, you can't punch him in the face. There's very little you can do against him, so he's a very intimidating guy. And he's also the only henchman in the entire series, unless you count Mr. White. Um, to survive a film. So yes, he actually survives this film, which has never happened before, and he will be returning to the next one, which is really cool. And the next one's a very, very mixed bag, but Jaws is one of the best parts of the next one, so. Yeah, um, I love this film. I love the opening song. I absolutely love the disco, like, retro music. And um, I love, like, the, the filming style, the how gradiness it is, and I, 
It just, it took some of the parts of the Man with the Golden Gun, which I liked, which was like the great set design and the quirkiness of it. Um, like I felt like there was some Golden Gun inspiration when they're like changing the lights and they were uh, like during that theater thing where um, they went to like Egypt and they're at a theater. So yeah, this movie just has it all. It really, really is fun. If I had to criticize it, I mean, I don't want to, but if I had to, I would say Carl Stromberg is not the most intimidating or memorable foe that Bond has ever faced. And his henchman completely outshines him. Hell, even the helicopter lady outshines Stromberg in this. But, um, and the other thing is I felt like the final battle is really good, but it does feel like really drawn out at times. So, I mean, if you just, if you just want a super, super long action scene and a big climax, then you're going to get what you want. Um, so, but for me, it's like, I do kind of prefer things to be a little bit tighter and, uh, more trimmed. So the final battle is one of the bigger final battles. And, um, yeah, I mean, Thunderball has a really big final battle as well, but that one's like so clever and unique that I don't mind it. And this one's a little bit more standard, so I just don't need it to last so long. But, uh, Spy Who Loved Me, basically a perfect movie. Um, you know, it's one of the Bond's best. It, it is Roger Moore's best for sure. So, I mean, not necessarily his performance is the best. I'd say, like, his first one was probably his best performance. Because every movie he kind of looks more tired than the last one. But, like, just the film he's in. You know, Bond is, like, arguably just a plot device. Yes, he has, he has plot armor, but, I mean, it's not always about Bond. Sometimes it is about the, the elements that surround him. So, yeah. So, Spy Who Loved Me, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I used to have this out of 10, but I want to be a little bit more realistic. So, let's go with a 9. This is one of my favorite, for sure, and um, yeah, highly recommend it. Also, one other thing I want to say is that um, this movie has really, really good continuity. This is, this might be the only Bond movie that specifically references the fact that Bond had a wife in the past. So yes, he was married before, and they actually reference it, and it's so cool. So yeah, I love this movie. I love the humor. I love the action. I love everything about it, and um, yeah, it's just great. So 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.